Hello everyone, it is Tuesday, May 21st, in the year of our Lord, 2013. How are all you doing out there? I am doing awesome as always, wicked awesome. It's two for Tuesday, it's titillating Tuesday. That means two hunks, two babes, two songs, two beers, two hats, two sets of sunglasses, and twice the fun. Yeah! Hi, folks. Um... Sadly, the past two days have been awful for our friends in Oklahoma, Kansas, places of that nature, Midwest, lots of tornadoes. Folks, please, 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 please stay safe. All I ask, my thoughts and prayers are with each and every one of you in hopes that the damage and injuries and deaths aren't as bad as originally uh, it looks like. It's just awful. But, uh... A little difference on the music today. Reason? Because uh, the actors and actresses for our babes and hunks of the day all tie into a theme. Alright? With that said, now normally they're my um, unofficial sponsor for Two for Tuesday, but I'm going to give them some love because Mustang Brewing Company out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, which I hope to God is still around. Uh, they watch my show all the time. I support their beer. Unfortunately, down here in Yeehaw, Texas, well, guess what we can't get? Because Oklahoma and Texas hate each other. Well, they're the same damn state, really, in my opinion. Hey, I'm from, I'm from Massachusetts. I'm a asshole. What do I know? Hell, if, you, if you're west of New York, south of Philly, you're a farmer. You know what I mean? Just saying, you know. All right, all right. I'm busting your chops a little bit, kids. Relax. I'm parched. But today's show brought to you by Mustang Brewing Company. Look them up on the old Facebook. Look them up on the Internet. Folks, they are awesome. With that said, it's time to bust out one of beer consumption apparatus. Today's beer of the day. Never had it before. Don't Jalapeno. No label brewing company. Katy down here in Yeehaw, Texas. Katy, Texas. No label brewing company. I got no percentage on this here beer. I don't know how strong it is. Um, it says delicious ale is very drinkable with a slightly with a slight spicy burn at the back end. Brewed with raw and roasted jalapenos. I hope this stuff's better than Billy's Chili's, which that stuff is just god awful. Probably opening up brass, proper technique. Here we go. All right, there we go. 45 degree angle right into the beer consumption apparatus right over the keyboard because I'm just that damn good. Well, I'll tell you what, this beer looks better than the other one did. I like the look of it. We'll see how the taste is, eh? Cheers and beers to all you prosses that say in Germany, Kampai, as they say in Japan. Oh. Billy's Chili's, I think I rated as a D+. Plus. This stuff right here, oh, it's so much better. This is a straight solid B. Good spice, good flavor, good times. You can make a spicy beer and have it delicious. And no label brewing company, you have done it. Don Jalapeno, good stuff, highly recommended from the Love Doctor to you. With that said, I've only got one birthday for today, and it's a milestone birthday. Quarter of a century, man alive, 25, that's the way to live, baby. My good friend, Michael McLean. <laughs> Squeeze me. Happy birthday to you, brother. Now, I have yet to meet this guy. He's a fellow Mafia Wars player. We like to whack schmucks and schmuckettes on the old Facebook. It's a lot of uh, hiccups, burps, wow. A lot of fun, great way to get rid of pent-up aggression. I'm telling you that right now. Um, so, Michael, cheers and beers to you, brother. Congratulations. The perfect age, 25. Why? Insurance goes down. You can rent a car legally, and, well, you can still drink one of these. Adult beverages. Ooh, yeah. Cheers and beers, brother. Hope you enjoy the show. All right. Let's, uh, before I tie in a bunch of special shout-outs, go give, well, they're all special every day. My good friends, Ann and his better half, Danielle Metz, living in jolly old England. They're both badass crew dogs. And I miss you guys big time. 
And I'm giving you guys a shout out because it's been a while since I've given you a shout out on beer and song of the day. And I love the picture that you guys had. Numerous beers, lots of great food. I'm telling you, that is what beer drink is all about. Good food, good times, good people, and good beer. Delirium Tremens. That impressed me. When I saw that delirium glass, I was like, damn. Now, there's some people that know their beer. Ann and Danielle, you guys definitely know your beer. You guys definitely know about the art of crew dogging. And you guys are totally awesome. And I miss you both big time. Cheers and beers to the two of youths. Have a wicked awesome day. Hope you enjoy the show. Next on the list. Ah, my man, Mike Mackey. A badass gat god I worked with in jolly old England. A legend of a man indeed. How you doing, Mike? Hope you're doing well. I know you used to live down here in Yeah, Texas. You used to all, also live up in northern Texas, better known as Oklahoma. And uh, some scary things going on there right now. Have been in the past couple days. Very scary. Thoughts and prayers are out to all of you and anybody affected. I know people personally already that have had their areas hit. Um, just awful, awful, awful. Haven't heard it back if uh, they suffered any damage or anything, but believe me, I've been all over the Facebook and, uh, whew, good Lord. All right, but Mike, cheers the bears to you, my friend. I miss working with you. You have a wicked awesome day. And hope you enjoy the show. Next on the list. Definitely been looking through the Hunk of the Day album lately, haven't you? My good friend I've known for over 20 years. The lovely, beautiful Vaughn McIntyre. A sweetheart of a lady. A good Christian woman. Vaughn, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. Need more people like you in the world. There's no doubt about that. Definitely miss you big time. And uh, always a pleasure hearing from you. Hope you have a wicked awesome day. Hope you enjoy the show. And, uh, hey, Vaughn, if you got any requests for a babe's hunks of the day, a beer that you'd like to see me uh, consume on this here show, how about some music? Want to hear a song on the beer and song of the day? You let me know. We'll see what we can do for you. No guarantees. I'm not going to play Britney Spears, Christina Scanclair, Instinct, Backdoor Boys, 98 uh, Degrees. and uh, I am not playing those groups. No. That will not happen. Justin Bieber, no, uh -uh. can't do it, sorry, but pretty much everything else, you know, I mean, I mean, yesterday we had uh, Ray Manzarek pass away of the Doors, unbelievable, I think they're all dead now, he was only 74 years old, he was the leader of the Doors, you know, I mean, Jim Morrison was the star, but Ray Manzarek was the one that kept that band together, no doubt about it, and uh, Ray Manzarek, rest in peace, brother, man. Definitely rest in peace. Good band indeed. Cheers and beers. And if I'm going to do a moment of silence for Ray Manzarek, by God, I'm going to do a moment of silence for all those affected by the Oklahoma predominantly uh, tornadoes over the past couple days. It's scary. I got a lot of friends up there. Some of you I'm going to give shout outs to in a moment. Um, I'll tell you a story real quick, okay? A friend of mine a couple years ago, I was in Bible camp, and uh, found out a friend of mine, very, very good friend of mine, Steve Holland, okay? Some of you know him. Um, some of you don't. Steve Holland, look up the uh, Alabama tornadoes from a couple years ago. Look up Steve, S-T-E-V-E, -E, Stephen Holland, H-O-L-L-O-N. Look him up. Folks, he's a hero. I'm telling you right now, that man is a hero. A badass crew dog. I worked with in jolly old England. One of the nicest people you would ever meet from Prattsville, Alabama. An Alabama man. Very proud Alabama um, Crimson Tide fan. And uh, as was his wife and two kids. His wife, uh, wife Karen, and uh, his two daughters. Well, let me tell you something about this man. That batch of tornadoes that rolled through a couple years ago. That man... That hero, Steve, they were in Trailer Park, you know, with a bunch of family. And uh, tornado came. Steve um, had his daughter get into some big crate or something, his older daughter, Renee. She got into a crate. He laid on top of that. And he gave her life. I mean, he gave his life to save hers. Folks, I'm telling you right now, it, I, I can't even stress how scary tornadoes are. I never, ever feared them, was nervous about them, or anything. 
until I saw and lost my good friend, my buddy, Steve Holland. Steve Holland, God bless you. Rest in peace, man. I miss you, bud. I miss you big time. And we need more heroes like you in the world, man. With that, I salute and I drink to my friend Steve and his wonderful family. All right, sorry for a somber note, um, but it had to be done. And by golly, it's time to get the show back on the road the way we love to do things because, like Morgan Freeman said in Shawshank Redemption, get busy living or get busy dying, and by golly, we're getting busy living. <coughs> <coughs> All right, my good friend Zach Cruley, a badass AR crew dog director in jolly old England, he's living in Oklahoma. And uh, luckily, he left before the storms came. He does not know if he has a house to return to right now. Zach, you're a good friend, a great guy. I miss you, bud. Miss working with you, and I'm glad you're safe. Brother, hey, cheers and beers to you. Hope you enjoy the show, man. I'm here for you. All right? Next on the list, my good friend, Brooke Lillard. I saw your post yesterday. Scared as can be. And I get it. I totally understand. Your daughter, you know, said it was heading right for her house. I don't know which daughter it was. Uh, if it was Lacey, Larissa. Um, but, wow. I know I know. last year you dealt with a tornado in your hometown. I remember seeing that. Unbelievable. Brooke, hey, I'm here for you, girl. And uh, tell you, you stay safe, all right? Because this guy's staying safe. Damn right. I got a lot of living to do. Brooke, you are awesome. Totally, totally awesome. Love chatting with you. And, uh, hey, feel like playing some song, pup. It's there. And, uh, hope you enjoy the show. Have a wicked awesome day. More friends up in Oklahoma. My good friends, Josh, and his better half, Kelly Graves. Josh, I know you knew, Steve. And I know how bummed we were when we were in Bible camp together. You know, we found God, learned lots of scripture, and yes, we did learn about these as well. Josh Graves, his better half, the lovely Kelly. Great hanging out with you in Bible camp, Josh. And, uh, dude, please, 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 you, Kelly, your three kids, continue staying safe. You know, good hearing from you. And, uh, the love doctor will be praying for you. All right, in the meantime... Cheers and beers. And hey, I want some Mustang Brewery beer, bro. Hook a brother up, would you? You help me, I help you. You had a request to me yesterday. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email Ivan. We will make things happen. I am here for you, bro. I support like a double D bra. Underwire. That support. <coughs> Squeeze me. And how about a shout out to my good friends, Tim and his better half, Cammy McManus. Tim's a comical nav wizard I worked with in jolly old England. Cammy's his better half. And uh, Cammy's parents love them to death. Ray and Linda got to hang out with them in Kansas back in uh, 2005. I'm telling you, these right here are some awesome people. You've seen Tim on this here show before. In fact, I believe Tim was my very first ever guest co-host on the, uh, I want to say it was the February 17th. 2012 edition of Beer and Song of the Day. Yep, I believe it was that day. It might have been, the, no, it wasn't Valentine's Day. I can't remember. But Tim came out here, hung out with me for the night. And uh, Tim, Cammy, I love you guys. I miss you guys. And uh, I hope to God you've stayed safe. All right? You better be. And I want to keep hearing from you. Cheers and beers to the two of you and your wonderful family. And I uh, hope you enjoy the show. The Love Doctor's here for you. All right. Now we got some trivia. We had two trivia questions. One was answered correctly by two different people, and I'll get to that in a moment. The other one, nobody answered. And I'm going to go with that one first. When J.J. Abrams rebooted the Star Trek franchise in 2009, it was necessary to recast the beloved characters of Star of Captain Kirk and his crew. Well, there were two actors that didn't have the chance to gain the wisdom of their predecessors about the characters. Name the new actors. Well, nobody answered that one, but Carl Urban played as Dr. McCoy, 
and Simon Pegg played as Scotty. Why? Because actor DeForest Kelly, who played um, <clears throat> Dr. McCoy, passed away in 1999 at the age of 79. And uh, Scott and uh, James Doohan, 2005, he passed away at the age of 84. So, unfortunately, they're no longer with us. But Carl Urban, Simon Pegg, way to go. Unfortunately, nobody got it. So, you know, fans, a small GFY to you. Don't be scared to try to answer the question. At least try. God hates coward. Just saying. Give it a shot. Throw it out there. Say, hey, maybe it's Bob Marley. Hell, I don't know. But, hey, a wrong answer is better than no answer at all, in my opinion. I want interactiveness, okay? For every time somebody gets involved in a post on Beer Song of the Day, I'm counting it as one point. I'm telling you, whoever gets most involved gets Fan of the Week. All right? I told you about the contest on the old Facebook, and uh, I'm going to tell you again on this here show. Whoever is the most involved fan every week will be Fan of the Week for next week. All right? You will get a special shout-out. And if, with your permission, I will grab a picture of you posted in our Fan of the Week album that I am going to make. Unless my admins want to head that up, Sarah, Justin, it's up to you to... It's up to you two. Woohoo! But anyway, screw it, beer. Mm. Oh boy. Empty has a brain cells and every tank of fan. Well, good thing we got uh reinforcements, eh? Sierra Nevada! Keller Vice, Hefeweizen, from Chico, California, the land of fruits and nuts, otherwise known as Western Nevada. Four point eight percent. So you know, near average strength. And check this out, folks. Keller Weiss is one of the few American Hefeweizens made using the traditional Bavarian style of open fermentation. This difficult and labor-intensive technique adds uncommon depth and flavor complexity. Our hazy golden Hefeweizen is deeply, deeply flavorful, refreshing, and perfect for a sunny day like today. 98 degrees, and all around my house, there's a, some really intense-looking clouds. But uh, above my house... Clear, 100%, 98 degrees and humid, and it sucks. But anyway, it says um, to serve, pour two-thirds into a glass, swirl, and pour the rest. Well, this stuff right here is, uh, wow, flavors reminiscent of ripe banana and spicy clove. <whistles> Sounds like a lot of action in this here beer, eh? Probably open air brass popper technique. Oh, and a decent pop from my man Justin Dimmitt, who always appreciates a good pop. There you go. I'm going to try to follow directions on that one, okay? 45 grand on the right in the beer consumption apparatus right over the keyboard because I'm just that damn good. About two thirds there. Swirl it around a little bit, but I'm right handed, so I can. Yeah. Swirl it around, it says, so I'm going to do that. Okay. And pour the rest. I don't like it too heady, in my opinion. I don't like I don't like beer that's too heady like that. But hey, it's okay. That's how the experts say to drink it and pour it. By golly, the love doctor is gonna do it that way. Cheers and beers to all you processes that say in Germany, come by as they say in Japan. Oh my! Oh my! OMG, as you kids say. OMG. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's a straight solid A. This stuff is so smooth and so delicious. Wow! Sierra Nevada, by golly, you got it right, baby. You got it right. And I've had real German Hefeweizen many times in my lifetime. All right? I spent seven years in jolly old England. You think I'm going to get myself a freaking... Uh, Hefeweizen? Duh! All right, let's get moving, eh? Folks, I got to do something uh, unique with this. Because we've got two babes and two hunks, and I figured the best thing to do, <coughs> because they're scattered all over my phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show them all off at once. All right? <coughs> Squeeze me. I want you, the viewer, to let me know is it a good thing or a bad thing? It will, <coughs> squeeze me, save time. It will save time, I promise you that. 
right? I'm, I'm not, I'm only doing this on two for Tuesday because that's, and probably Cinema Saturday as I did with uh, um, Tombstone. Remember that movie, Tombstone? Great movie. Four hunks we had for you lovely ladies and you men that love the men. And then one beautiful baby of the day, Dana Delaney. Uh, all right. But what we're going to do, we have the lovely, she's 80 years old now, almost 80, we're going on 81, Nichelle Nix, the original Lieutenant Uhura, as my phone goes, <laughs> all right, Lieutenant Uhura, oh yeah, Nichelle Nichols, and then her replacement, oh, this girl, gorgeous, Zoe Saldana, yeah, Woman's finer than a new set of snow tires. Zoe Saldana. Wait a rip. That's uh, Michelle Nix, okay? I mean, Michelle Nichols. Huh, <laughs> Nix. <laughs> Michelle Nix. Oh, shit. I just remembered something. Hey, the second question of the day before I go any further. Name the Star Trek main performer to appear in the most Star Trek movies and number of appearances. And, uh, folks, we had a good battle going on the page. Between my good friends, Michelle Nix and Jonathan Hemel. Michelle, I worked with her uh, lesser half, Mike, in jolly old California. The land of fruits and nuts, better known as Southern Oregon. I got to hang out with them in Germany in 2006. And Michelle, total sweetheart. Very active um, fan of the Beer and Song of the Day Facebook page. She got part of the question right, and my man Jonathan Hemel... A badass gat god I worked with in jolly old England. He's from Louisiana, better known as Southern Arkansas. Just kidding, Jonathan. I know you're going to kill me now, and you know where I live. And Jonathan, bring your ass over for dinner sometime. Hit me up. I haven't heard from you since the Titanic sank. Jeez, it feels like it's been that long. But Michelle and Jonathan, um, you, got, you guys actually were bantering back and forth, okay? But you you guys were each right on one part. Because... Michelle said Leonard Nimoy was in the most appearances. You were correct, Michelle. And Jonathan said that uh, whoever who said it, uh, Jonathan said that Leonard Nimoy was in eight movies, which is absolutely correct. You, the two of you, get a shout out. So hey, right, Michelle, you get a love doctor salute, and I know you love that hunk of the day from Sunday, Russell Wilson. Yeah, you got. You gave me kudos on that one. Thank you. Michelle, total sweetheart. And beautiful, I might add. And then Jonathan Hemel, living down here in Yeehaw, Texas, otherwise known as Southern Oklahoma. Or is it Western Louisiana? It might be that. I don't know. He is from Louisiana. So, Jonathan, Michelle, phenomenal job to the two of youths. And by golly, cheers and beers to both of you. Way to go. All right, let's show off a hunk, a couple of hunks, a couple of babes, Nichelle Nichols, and then Zoe Saldana, and then for the men, we're bringing in Dr. McCoy, DeForest Kelly. The late, great DeForest Kelly has not been represented on the show yet. Miles will bring him in, and then we're going to bring in actor Carl Urban. Yeah, there you go, playing as Dr. McCoy in the new Star Wars, I Star Trek movies, I said Star Wars, shame on me. Stop saying Star Wars and Star Trek A, hey, you know? There's a big difference between the two of them, and my man Justin Dimmitt will call me out on this show. I guarantee it. Don't be so damn sensitive, Justin. Star Trek September 8, 1966, Star Wars. The first one released, Episode 4, 1977, okay? I get it. Hey, we've done a lot with Star Trek and Star Wars. There's Zoe Saldana. Wow. Alright, and I think it's about time we bring some out-of-this-world music for an out-of-the-world show. This is not a Star Trek episode, folks. But I just like, when we do Two for Tuesday, I like to tie things in together. How about Blast Off by the Tyrones from 1958? We're going to bring in a couple space-age style rock and roll songs for you. As we show off... Wow, look at Michelle Nichols. And there you go, Kyle Urban. Yeah. That's Michelle Nichols nowadays. There too. 
Again, Kyle Urban. Zoe! Ah, the late, great DeForest Kelly. One of the nicest men you'll ever hear. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, the only Star Trek character, the only Star Trek actor that never had beef with anybody during the entire filming, Michelle Nichols. She was gorgeous in her day, folks, I'm telling you. And a trendsetter, too. Carl Urban. Listen to that sax blasting instrumental, eh? Zoe! Wow! That'll make you blow your horn, eh? <laughs> oh, dear lord. So I'm just going to show them all off, folks. That hair, eh? It's like 1966 right there, folks. Whoa, look at Look at Dr. McCoy back in the day, huh? Hey Sarah Milligan, this is what I was talking about. You said uh you said he was ugly. Wrong. He was actually a dapper young man back in the day, okay? And hey, besides, folks. I'm going to tell you something right now, and I'm not trying to beat up my lovely lady admin, Sarah, because I agree with you, Sarah. The Forrest Kelly was never known for his looks. I agree with you there. In fact, I think every man's disgusting, ugly, and repulsive. But, I will say this. What one person might consider ugly, somebody else might consider attractive. And that goes to all of you. That goes to me. That goes to my admins. That goes to my fans. Now this is amazing right here. Look at this. Talk about the first ever interracial kiss on TV. That's Captain Kirk William Shatner. That's Lieutenant Uhura Michelle Nichols. Wow. You talk about awesome. That is awesome right there. Alright. So amazing the uh, barriers that they went through with Star Trek. A lot of people don't think about that, but yes, they did. They broke some serious barriers. Um, let's continue showing off some more hooks and babes. And there you go, ladies. Hey, mm. Carl Urban. Yeah, handsome belly. I'll take your word on that because I think all men are disgusting, ugly, and repulsive. <laughs> nice face, eh? Hey, there are celebrity birthdays to mention. Almost forgot about that. Because I pity the fool if I don't mention this birthday. Mr. T. Lawrence Tarot, he was born. Mr. T. Born on this day, May 21st, 1952. He's 61 years old now. Whoa, that's kind of cool, eh? How about uh, the notorious B.I.G.? Born on this day, 1972. Passed away, 1997. Much too young. How about Tom Daly? Remember him in the 2012 Olympics, Summer Olympics? The English uh, diver, young kid. Yeah, I know a lot of ladies were drooling over him. Tom Daly, he's 19 years old today, ladies. There you go. How about Josh Hamilton, formerly of the Texas Rangers, um, now of the Anaheim Angels, a rival. <clears throat> a lot of people pissed off about that one down here in Yeehaw, Texas, otherwise known as uh, Eastern New Mexico. Josh Hamilton. Right fielder, badass with the bat, and, uh, you know, hey, he's 32, what are you, you going to do? Had drug problems a few years back, it overcame them. Zoe Saldana, <sighs> wow, what a picture, eh? I think so. Ooh, another great picture of her. Ah, the late, great Raymond Burr. Of course, Perry Mason, born in the state, 1917, passed away, 1993, 76 years old. Um... Zoe Saldana, a beautiful, beautiful African-American woman man that I am just drooling over. <clears throat> Justin Dimmitt, great idea on this one, man. Got to give you that. Um, that's Waller, born this day in 1904, passed away in 1943. He acted in the 1943 film Stormy Weather with one gorgeous Lena Horn, who will be Babe of the Day on a future episode. Sarah, I'm going to hook it up. I'm telling you. Lena Horn, an amazing lady indeed. Stunningly gorgeous. But uh, 
That's Waller. Died much too young. Phenomenal f piano player and a very funny guy to boot. Honest Day in 1980. You know him as Goatee, you kids. He's 33 years old. Wooter Goatee the backer. Somebody that I used to know or something like that's his famous song. I thought it was pronounced Gotai or Got Ye or something like that. G-O-T-Y-E. And I found out from the kids out there that it's Goatee. Goatee. That's G-O-A-T-E-E. -E, okay? Dude, don't spell your name wrong. Jeez. <coughs> that's how I feel about it. Squeeze me. Oh, boy. Speaking of our fruitcakes. The late, great, badass crip Canadian crippler Chris Benoit. Born in the day, 1967, passed away 2007, 40, year old, 40 years old. Roy Rage killed himself, his wife, the lovely woman, and uh, his kid. The things that he did was just disgusting. Unbelievable. It's too bad because he was an amazing wrestler. Um, how about Feruza Bach? Her birthday today. 39 years old. Remember her? <clears throat> sure you do if you remember the movie... Um, Ah, shit, I should have written it down. With Nev Campbell. The Craft! Ah, of course, The Craft. With Nev Campbell. And Feruza Bach, she was the freaky-looking chick with the uh, ring in her nose. Kind of cute, though. I, I think she's very cute. Kind of a goth look at, to her. She's just freaking gorgeous. Zoe Saldana. Yowza. Um, how about Kent Herbeck? Any Minnesota Twins fans out there? First baseman Kent Herbeck. Born this day in 1960. Spent his entire 14-year career with the Minnesota Twins. How about douchebag Al Franken? I say douchebag because he's a former uh, quote-unquote comedian. And now, a politician, he thinks that <clears throat> this guy is a freaking communist. I'm telling you right now. Al Franken. Look him up. Famous for, um, oh, that Stewart movie that was stupid. Um, Stuart, whatever, Stuart Little or something like that. It was a stupid movie by a stupid man. Yeah, Al Franken, you know what? I, I shouldn't even mention your birthday, ass bandit. Hey, how about this one? Oh, speaking of ass bandits, how about this guy? Thank God that prisoner's justice prevailed. This douchebag was born the same exact month and year as Ken Herbeck, 1960. May 21st, 1960. But the difference is, he was murdered in prison in 1994. 33 years old. Jeffrey Dahmer. Good. Way to go, prisoners. And Jeffrey Dahmer, you sick son of a bitch. That's what you deserve. All right. And then we got Ronald Isley of the Isley Brothers. 72 years old today. Way to go. Isley Brothers with their famous song, Shout. And then uh, Twist and Shout a few years later, 1962. Shout from 1959. How about Judge Reinhold, born in the state in 1956? We knew him in Stripes. We knew him in uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That's right, because his sister was... Uh, I, I'm sorry, the chick that he was nuts... His sister was played by Jennifer Jason Lee, and the chick that he was nuts about was played by... <laughs> Baby Cates. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about now. How about Bruce Buffer? <clears throat> Michael Buffer's brother. Boxing announcer. And uh, Bruce Buffer announces UFC, and it does a damn good job. Bruce Buffer is 56. Judge Reinhold is 57. Glenn Curtis, famous Amy aviation pioneer, born this day in 1878, died in 1930, much too young, only 51, 52 years old. And then we've got Ricky Williams. Um, Hall of, not a Hall of Famer. He'll never make the Hall of Fame because he was Hall of Fame when it came to uh, smoking weed. That man should make the Hall of Fame for weed smokers, I'm telling you. Ricky Williams. Uh, Miami Dolphins uh, running back. New Orleans Saints running back, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Yeah. I think he was drafted by the Saints, actually. Uh, Jonathan Hemel, you can let me know about that. But anyway, Ricky Williams, when he wasn't smoking dope, he was actually a pretty damn good running back. 36 years old today. Hi. Right. There's your uh, celebrity birthdays as we continue drooling over famous people. Michelle Nix, I mean, this woman's just freaking gorgeous, I'm telling you. She definitely broke some barriers, there's no doubt about that. Hey, we're going to bring out the uh, final song of the day in just a moment as we bring out a lot of uh, today's... Um, 
I always call them random facts of the day, but they're not. This day in history is what it's called. That's what it's supposed to be called. No, she has clothes on, folks. Don't get emotionally erect, all right? Oh, what a rack. Hmm? That's what I'm saying. That is a beautiful picture right there. Justin Dimmitt, take note of that, huh? Isn't that a gorgeous picture of the lovely Nichelle Nichols? I'm telling you, it reminds me of Dorothy Dandridge back in the day. That is an amazing picture. And she's just enjoying life, 80 years old, still going strong. Um, on this day in 2011, Christian radio announcer Harold Camping predicts that uh, at 6 p.m., May 11th, in the year of our Lord, 2011, the date of rapture for all Christians around the world. Well, hey there, Harold Camping. Why don't you give yourself a big fat GFY because you were wrong. Looks like the world's still going strong, eh? I don't know. Just saying. On this day in 1990, the last episode of Newhart aired on CBS TV. Not the Bob Newhart show. Later on, they had one called Newhart. Okay? There you go. There's uh, Dr. McCoy. On this day in 1980, you Star Wars fans will love this. The Empire Strikes Back premieres May 21st in the year of our Lord, 1980. On this day in 1979... Elton John becomes the very first Western rocker to perform live in the Soviet Union. Look at this picture of DeForest Kelly. Wow! Definitely before he was known as Dr. McCoy. That's the uh, 50 style, yeehaw, country style. That is amazing. DeForest Kelly, a dapper man indeed in his day, if I don't say so myself. But we know him as the doctor. We always have, always will. James McCoy. Again, another nice picture of him. But that's how he will always be famously known for. And those piercing blue eyes that he had. Yippers. Dr. McCoy. We miss you, buddy. On this day in 1965, the first nuclear-powered lighthouse begins operations. Where at? Chesapeake Bay, Maryland. How about that? Nuclear-powered lighthouse? Really? I suppose so. There you go. Older and bolder. I mean, he's like 67 years old in that movie, okay? If I'm not mistaken, I was Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. He's got to be, that's got to be from like the late 40s, early 50s right there. Amazing. Dr. McCoy, definitely a cool dude. On this day, 1955, the first transcontinental round trip solo flight, sunrise to sunset. Wow. On this day, 1954, the amendment to give 18-year-olds the right to vote was defeated. Well, guess what? 17 years later... It passed. So, ha! 26th Amendment lowered the voting age from 21 to 18. I'll leave it that alone. On this day, 1943, the fastest nine-inning American League baseball game in history. 89 minutes, folks. An hour and 29 minutes. The Chicago White Sox defeated the Washington Senators. Boy, I wish baseball could be that quick every game, huh? I love baseball, but good Lord, sometimes it is... Hello. On this day, 1934, Oskaloosa, Iowa, becomes the first United States city to fingerprint its citizens. Well, there you go. That's where it all started. Folks, I'm going to bring up the last song of the day so we can rock the house again. The song is called Rocket by... Uh, by Joe Bennett and his Spikle Tones from 1957. I think you're going to love this one. This is one of the fastest songs you've ever heard on Beer and Song of the Day. I think I've played it before, actually. <coughs> it's a short song. Because we are out of this world, baby. Representing some Star Trek actors. Look at that picture of DeForest Kelly, huh? Wow, Aviator, baby. That's got to be early 30s right there. Amazing. Hey, Justin Denver, what do you think of that picture, huh? On this day in 1929, the Automatic Electric Stock Quotation Board was installed in New York City. There you go, this black and white Star Trek cast. Big one here. Legendary 
Oh, talk about Hep to the Jive 70 style. Listen to that guitar. Wow. See? I don't care what anyone says. Ladies, man. They love the good doctor. How can you not? Honestly, in 1932, Amelia Earhart was the first, completed the first transatlantic solo flight by a woman. On this day in 1927, Charles Lindbergh completed the first solo air crossing of the Atlantic, landing in Paris, France. Look at that hat, eh? Loving it. A lot of pictures today, folks. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm trying to avoid showing duplicates to all y'all so I can speed up the process. On this day in 1925, Canadians are allowed to sell beer. Good, because America couldn't in 1925. We had Prohibition. Prohibition sucked. Glad I didn't have to endure that. Beer and Song of the Day wouldn't exist. It'd be called uh, Soda and Song of the Day or something like that. On this day in 1921, the oldest radio station west of the Mississippi River licensed in Greeley, Colorado. And now you know. On this day in 1918, the uh, U.S. House of Representatives passes the, an amendment allowing women the right to vote. Way to go. About damn time. 1920 election, the first time they were allowed to vote. Late, but better late than ever. That's my philosophy. But we all know it was bullshit that women didn't have the right to vote. Nor did African Americans or people of other races. Just awful. Michelle Nichols, not awful. But she couldn't vote. For a lot of years. Um, there you go. Representing hanging out with the Prez. That's kind of cool. I think so. Whether you like the President or not. I don't care what. If you're hanging out with the President. That's pretty damn awesome in my opinion. I love that picture. I really do. On this day in 1917. Leo Pinckney becomes the very first American. Drafted during World War One. Wow. On this day, 1914, Greyhound Bus Company begins. Where at? Minnesota. So now you know where Greyhound Bus Company began. Minnesota. Hey, you learned something new today. Today wasn't wasted, right? Damn right, love doctor. And I'll drink to that. On this day, 1908, the first horror movie premiered. Where at? Chicago, Illinois. That's right. The movie? Dr. Jekyll. And Mr. Hyde. Love this picture. I'm going to show it again. On this day in 1881, some really cool things happened. And, I, and they've been busy as can be in Oklahoma. The America Red Cross, founded by Clara Barton. Hell yeah! America Red Cross doing amazing things. Speaking of America Red Cross, I'm wearing it right now. But, I almost forgot. I almost screwed it up. I almost failed, folks. Got to represent my daughter's uh, Christmas hat and a uh, different set of sunglasses. It wouldn't be two for Tuesday without it. It wouldn't be baby the day without her, I'll tell you that. On this day, also in 1881, not that I give a damn, but the U.S. Nas the U.S. Nation Lawn Tennis Association formed. Really? Do I give a shit? No. But maybe you do, so I mentioned it. On this day in 1832, the first Democratic National Convention was held in Baltimore, Maryland. Ooh. On this day in 1819, first bicycles, known then as Swift Walkers, in the United States were introduced in New York City. Swift Walkers, really? Wow. Interesting. Now you know. Oh, now I know how hot she is. On this day in 1804... The Lewis and Clark expedition began uh, into darkness. And folks, this one is very near and dear to my heart. For I am from 
Squeeze me. I am from there. I mentioned the man yesterday, but this is very important to me. <coughs> Squeeze me. On this day, May 21st, in the year of our Lord, 1602, explorer Bartholomew Gosnold first sighted the island of Martha's Vineyard. Yes, folks, I am from Martha's Vineyard Island, just south of Massachusetts, 102 square miles of awesomeness. And I grew up there. I was born in Falmouth, Massachusetts, June 27th, in the year of our Lord, 1973, at 6.15 in the morning. I moved to Martha's Vineyard Island, October 1973. Graduated Martha's Vineyard Regional High School class in 1991. And then I moved all over the world after that. And she's like, yeah, you did love, Doctor. Mm -hmm. A lovely smile. A lovely show. A long show. Hopefully it's well worth it. Martha's Vineyard and all my friends there. I miss you. Great hanging out with you back in February. Hey, to Martha's Vineyard Island, the Love Doctor salutes. And unfortunately, I'm a wuss. I'll admit it. I can't suck down beer like a lot of vineyarders can. Slow and steady <clears throat> wins the race, folks. Well, it's time to eat some lumpia made from scratch. See, a couple days ago, my wife rolled 95 lumpias, okay? Lumpia made from scratch takes all day. And my love goddess made it happen. Lumpia! Mm. Folks, you know what time it is, right? Damn right, Reverend Dr. B. Folks, it's time to make, make like a fetus and head out so everybody take care of a wicked awesome night and day. Peace be the journey. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Don't just drink and drive my spirit. Drink all you might kill yourself or somebody else. And drinking and driving is dumber than being a Yankees fan. And what's dumber than that is rooting for douchebag cocksuckers like Eli. Oh, I'm as good as Tom Brady. Manning. Yeah, in your freaking dreams. You stupid Nimrod. Um, or men slapping women or racism or animal abuse or anybody who supports or is a member of the Westboro Baptist Church. Things like that are just plain stupid and definitely deserve a big fat GFY. Folks, I'm out of here. I'll see you all tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Midwest, please stay safe. Reverend Dr. B, the love doctor, is praying for each and every one of you, and that includes you.